Hello, it's 10 p.m. here in Accra. Good evening and welcome to News at 10, live from the News Hub at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. Let's start with a look at the day's major news highlights. The Electoral Commission has decided to revert to its original dumped logo, uh, discarding the controversial one which was outdoored under the immediate past chairperson Charlotte Say. In a memo dated October 4, uh, 2018 and signed by chairperson Jean Adukwe Mensah, the commission explained that with effect from today, the original logo which bears the coat of arms and has a ballot box showing the hand casting its vote has been restored. The memo was a copy to all commissioners head office directors, regional directors, deputy regional directors, district electoral officers and sectional heads. President Kufuado has revealed some 85 companies across the country have received 227 million cities stimulus package to encourage them to create jobs. Speaking at the offices of the Health Life Beverages Limited in Accra on the first day of his three-day tour of the Greater Accra region, the president insisted government is poised to support local companies and enhance economic development and uh, the NDC front flag bearer aspirants of the opposition uh, party have picked nominations to compete in the presidential primaries. The aspirants who will be vetted would also have to pay 400,000 CDs each at filing fees to enable them contest the January 19 primaries. Uh, the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Anthony Nsiasari, has defended the use of drones as the most efficient and cost-effective way to deliver medical supplies, particularly in remote communities in the country. The move, which he says should not be politicized, would enable government to achieve universal access to health care. And a third round of talks between Ghana and Togo is underway in Accra to avert a simmering maritime border dispute between the two countries over offshore oil exploration activities. Chief Director of the Ministry of Energy and Head of Ghana's technical team, Lawrence Apalse, disclosed the two parties are yet to come to an understanding which could lead to an agreement. Those are our major news highlights. You can hear me on 3FM 92.7 and we're streaming live on Facebook and on 3news.com. Let's start with our very first story. Tonight, President Tukufuado has revealed some 85 companies across the country have received 237 million cities stimulus package to encourage them to create jobs. Speaking at the office of the Health Life Beverages Limited in Accra on the first day of a three-day tour of the Greater Accra region, the president insisted government is poised to support local companies enhance economic development. Healthy Life is part of the Kira Group of Ghana-based international companies. Health Life Beverages is a celebrated brand among Ghanaians for its juices and milk products that are popular with children and adults. Managing Director of Healthy Life Beverages, Nyama Famiya said, the company is ready to expand further with additional $10 million, which support is made available to them who will see the company employing an additional 1,000 Ghanaians. This means that we will put about 5,000 peasant farmers growing everything from soya beans to watermelon and coconut in business. And it will indirectly mean that 10,000 people will be engaged in trade from retail to distribution. President Kofado said government will continue to support the indigenous companies expand to show up the economy. And the Ministry of Trade and Industry has provided technical assistance in the form of financial and operational management support to 85 companies across the country and has facilitated access to 237 million CDs in the form of medium-term credit to 16 firms in oil palm, pharmaceutical, agro-processing, beverages, cosmetics, textile, and 
poultry industries under favorable credit terms. The countless, the people who for eight years did nothing in this country and who are saying that nothing is going on, they should listen very carefully to the things I'm saying, to tell them about what is going on in Ghana today. If their eyes are closed, let them open their eyes. They will see that we are transforming Ghana. President Kufuado then moved to Tema, where he expected ongoing works on the Tema Steelworks and DVLA Pilot Concrete Roads project in Tema. The project involves the construction of 4.20 kilometer Tema Steelworks and 1.2 kilometer DVLA roads, construction of full depth pavement, provision of drainage structures, provision of pedestrian walkway. President Kufuado also inspected construction works on the great separation of the Tema motorway intersection. Phase 1 of the great separation project, which began in February 2018, is expected to be completed in 28 months. It will see the construction of 2.1 km three-lane dual carriageway with 730 meters underpass on the national route N1, improvement of approximately 1.9 km two-lane dual carriageway on the national route N2 from the Sherman runabout onto the Harbour Road. Phase two of the project will comprise construction of a flyover on the Akonsombo Tema Harbour Road. The Japanese government is providing funding of approximately $55.6 million through the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA. And President Kufuado has appealed to the chief executive officers and heads of businesses in the Tema enclave to join hands with government to promote economic growth and development. The president was interacting with uh, captains of industry from the Tema area as part of the tour of the Greater Accra region. The meeting, the first since the president assumed office, was to discuss pertinent issues affecting the day-to-day -day workings of the business leaders, addressing concerns ranging from tax stamps, law enforcement, among several others. President Kufuado reiterated government resolve to address their challenges. I will say about the, the tax stamp, yes, there are problems with it, fully aware, but I think that what we need to do with your cooperation and insight, is how best we can improve the system. Because the purpose of the system is to give us this level playing uh, uh, field, which so many areas of our national life does not occur. He also addressed concerns on ECOWAS free trade and movement. Based on the experience that we have, in ECOWAS, it's only Ghana and Africos that is going strictly by the tenants of the ECOWAS trade protocol concerning the movement of goods and people. So we humbly appeal to the president to use his high offices to ensure that uh, opportunities are availed for us to be able to sell into this market. I think what it requires is that the next time the leaders meet, we should begin to prepare to have a very close look amongst ourselves as to whether or not we are genuine about wanting this community or not. Why, so long as I am Ghanaian leader, will stand strongly for a genuine regional community and will argue for it. But equally, I cannot ostrich-like, just put my heads in the stand and, and the stand and say I don't recognize or see what other people are doing. He appealed for collaboration with government to stimulate growth in the economy. During business, we in government, we should help each other because we have a common goal. How to develop our economy as rapidly and as effectively as possible so that we can guarantee our people a better standard of living than what they have now. And uh, to some uh, politics now, five flag bearer aspirants of the opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, have picked nomination forms to compete in the party's presidential primaries. Their aspirants, who will be voted, would also have to pay 400,000 Ghana cities each as filing fees to enable them to contest the January 19 primary. The five are former President John Mahama, 
former vice chancellor of the University of Professional Studies, Professor Joshua Alabi, former CEO of National Health Insurance Authority, Sylvester Mensah, and businessman Stephen Atubiga, and second deputy speaker and MP for Nandoli Kalio, Alban Bagbin. Representatives of the aspirants picked the nomination forms on their behalf after paying 20,000 cities. Many of the aspirants, apart from former President John Mahama, condemned the astronomical increase in their nomination and filing fees after it was announced by the leadership of the party. Some of them petitioned the founder and chairman of the Council of Elders, Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings, for a downward review of the fees. The presidential primary is slated for January 19. Right, let's get on to Skype now and get to speak to uh, Cole Kweja Emisa Abraham, who is a governance expert and a lecturer at the University of Cape Coast. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you extremely uh, for your time. Now, some flag bearer hopefuls, as we know already, petition the former president, Rawlings, uh, over these nomination uh, forms and filing fees, but uh, some have gone ahead to pick nomination forms. Would you say that this is uh, a sign of betrayal to those uh, who had called for the review? Uh, thank you very much, Steve, for having me. Um, I wouldn't say it was a betrayal because with the petition, there was there was no evidence that the the fees will be reviewed downwards, especially when the general secretary, um, Mr. Siedun Katia, has had already come out to say that no downward review will be entertained whatsoever. And so, um, definitely, you see that um, it was it was actually a a good move by someone like uh, Professor Alabi to to go pick up his form. With reference to the other three, there are there are there are issues coming up, especially with um, um, with um, um, Mr. Bagbe, um, you know, uh, talking about the fact that he didn't know who went for the forms and he suspects his political opponent who would want to take over his parliamentary seat and all that. So, um, even though some of them have gone to the to pick the forms, I'm expecting not more than three people actually contesting for the uh, flag bearership race. Mm, that's very interesting. Now, we have uh, aspirants like Stephen Atubiga and Album Bagbing, who, who supporters actually picked forms for them. But like you rightly said, they are saying that, that this was done without their authorization. Should be, we be worried about this? I mean, here we are, the aspirants are saying, well, we didn't authorize anybody to go pick forms for us, but they, the forms have been picked anyway and the fees paid. Not at all. It is not a worry. Rather, it is it is a very good sign that um, people people are also bent on um, pushing others to contest for the flag bearership. Um, we 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 uh, most people um, tip uh, former President Mahama to of course be the be the uh, flag bearer. But at least it is a good sign. It is a very good sign. We shouldn't be worried. Of course, floating voters do not look at internal party wranglers. They look at uh, what is going on in the economy, what is happening in their pockets, and what is good for the country and themselves. So definitely there is nothing much to worry. I think the party the party will get over it once the flag bearer is chosen. And uh, I've spoken to some other political analysts who have expressed, actually, have expressed disappointment in people like uh, Spio Gabra and Kuju Bonsu, for example, who were unable to meet the deadline to file, to pick a nomination form by close of business uh, today. Uh, do you see their inability to uh, pick their nomination form as uh, a key dent? on their reputation as presidential aspirants? Not at all. Not at all. I rather see them as very principled individuals because right from the beginning, they opposed the amount that, that had been proposed. And um, Mr. Spiogabra, for instance, said he is going to stand by whatever that he has said, that it is, too it is too excessive. It has to come down before he will go and pick up his form. And so I see, I see, I see, I see that they are 
very much principled to stand by what what they were saying. Of course, um, I think they are also looking beyond just picking up the forms to to as to whether they have chances of winning or not. Especially um, someone like uh, Mr. Sylvester Mensah, uh, um, 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 Mr. Kujubunsu, and all that. I, I I personally think that they have looked beyond um, just picking up the forms to realize that is it is it worth it to pay 420,000 Ghana CD to contest when you know that in the end you may not you may not actually win and so it is a very prudent decision that they have made and i see that yes once the flag bearer is elected they will they, they will have no option than to rally behind whoever is elected all right now before you go a quick one i know that i have been spoken to you about the uh, setting of the nomination and filing fee to 20,000 and 400,000. But there are those who have raised key arguments to the effect that uh, as a social democratic party, setting such huge, uh, which some of them have called outrageous uh, amounts of for filing fees, actually uh, it's, it's a worrying sign that the social democracy, the party practices is breaking down. Johnson S. Educate has gone on to suggest that social democracy doesn't mean poverty, really. Where do we draw the line between the, the party being social democrats and this uh, high filing fees and uh, uh, nomination forms and filing fees they've set for aspirants? Yeah, um, um, thank you very much, Steve. Um, we, have, we have misinterpreted the social democracy ideology for, for a very long time. The fact that a party is practicing social democracy does not necessarily mean that the needful cannot be done. does not necessarily mean that it has to, it has to take on everybody, even if the person cannot afford. Now, it is, it is about the broad base of the party. Once democracy is attached to socialism, it means that the distribution of the assets and the liabilities of the state, it is done based on ability. And so it is, it is, it is not about the poor. It is not about looking at the masses to come in, but it is also about um, the democracy that is attached to it, which is very much representative. And yes, we are practicing representative democracy and so if if someone will need to pay a certain amount of money in order to be a representative of the people i don't see how it it acts as a dent on the ideology of social democracy definitely because look look we 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 we, we all we all we all would want to see good people in power we all we all would want to see people people who have the ability to perform and not anybody at all because we are practicing so just uh, call Kweja and Mr. Abraham. We're grateful for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, call uh, Mr. Ab Mr. Abraham is a governance expert and a lecturer at the University of Cape Coast. I'm Stephen N.T. This is News at 10. You can hear me live on 3FM 92.7. We're streaming also on our Facebook page and on 3news.com. Welcome back. Now, Chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Jean Mensah, has directed staff of the Commission to restore the original logo of the institution, effective today, the 4th of December. In a memo cited by TV3 and copied to commissioners, head office directors, regional directors, deputy regional directors, district electoral officers, and sectional heads, the commissioner advised that the original logo, which bears the coat of arms and has a ballot box showing the hand, Casting its vote has been restored. The memo further directs that the most recent logo be removed from the buildings or, and properties of the commission. And in other stories, beneficiaries of the Youth in Agriculture and Afforestation Program masked up to picket at the premises of the Ashanti Regional Office of the Forestry Commission over delays in payment of their allowances. But the police forcefully dispersed the crowd, describing their protests as unlawful. Here is a report by Ibrahim Abubakar. About 100 beneficiaries under the Youth in Agriculture and Afforestation Program 
converged some meters away from the regional office of the Forestry Commission over the delay in payments of their allowances. The main entrance of the commission was locked. Armed police personnel were stationed at the entrance to deny the group entry. For crying out loud, we are master's degree holders. We are not kids. We are not lame dogs. All right? They should pay us and take their job. We don't want to work for them again. They should pay us. Period. How can you come out and tell people you've paid us? What you've not given us anything? It's very bad. But there are some people who stay far away from their workplace. But the police insisted they had no permit to enter the premises. Meanwhile, the Ashanti Regional Manager of the Forestry Commission, Thomas Ochi, expressed surprise at the action of the beneficiaries. He said we have to group and come in our numbers to present our petition. When the various leaders at the site could have done that easily. Yes, we are prepared to receive them. Oh, for today, they will be around for some time. For today. Uh, we don't know what their plans are. Even you, information gathered, some started misbehaving, even in the presence of the police. And the Forestry Commission has assured beneficiaries of the Youth in a Forestation Programme of payment of their allowances before Christmas. The Chief Executive Officer of the Commission, Kweju Ousuefriye, made this known when the Lands and Natural Resources Ministry uh, took its turn at the Meet the Press series here in Accra. The Forestry Commission and the Youth Employment Agency signed a service agreement in 2017 for the joint implementation of a two-year forest plantation program under the Youth in Agriculture and Afforestation module. Beneficiaries were to establish forest plantations, undertake enrichment planting of degraded forest reserves, plant trees on farms, maintain and rehabilitate forest plantations. However, the youth engaged under the module have been faced with a myriad of challenges including reduction and delays in their allowances. We, 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 we want to assure them that the uh, allowances that are due them certainly would be paid because the, the, the laborer is worthy of his hire. And so having, having done the job, uh, we, are, we are doing all that we can to ensure that the, uh, the allowances are paid uh, before Christmas. On illegal logging and chainsaw activities, Minister for Land and Natural Resources Kwekwa Suma Chemin said the Forestry Commission has resourced and deployed 18 rapid response teams to hotspots of illegal activities in the forest district and wildlife protected areas. These are mobile units that have received military training and are arms bearing teams within the Forestry Commission. In the past six months, their operations culminated in the arrest of 181 suspects and seizure of 98,566 pieces of assorted lumber and 44 chainsaw machines. The Forestry Commission has facilitated the export of a total wood volume of about 169,000 meter cube, which yielded some $126 million. That's how we wrap up with News at 10. Thank you very much for your time. On behalf of the crew, good night. There is more news at 3news.com.